Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk about the latest technological advance in gene silencing through epigenetic editing by using programmable CRISPR fusion proteins. And so the advance we'll be talking about comes from this recent cell paper that describes what they call CRISPR-OFF, which is a single fusion protein that programs heritable epigenetic memory. Now, you might be thinking, I made a video on epigenetic editing just the other week. Why are we revisiting it so soon? Well, this paper shows quite nicely that this technique has been improved from earlier studies and can be used to actually target the majority of genes within a genome and is also highly specific. Also, they show that the epigenetic editing can be remembered by the cell and persist through multiple cell divisions. And so these are some really great advances that have been made and they also show that these marks can be reversed. But before we take a look at these new advances in the technology, I'll begin by addressing what the problem is that this technology is trying to solve and show you how this new technique compares to previous epigenetic editors and why this is such an awesome advance for CRISPR technology. So let's begin with CRISPR-Cas9. Many of you will probably have heard about CRISPR-Cas9 and its ability to edit genes. And so the way that this happens is that the CRISPR complex, which involves the Cas9 protein and a so-called guide RNA, is recruited to a specific site on DNA that matches the RNA sequence of the guide RNA. So the first concept is you have programmable targeting to a DNA site. And by programmable, I mean you can change the guide RNA sequence to alter the site that the CRISPR-Cas9 complex recognises. Once it's arrived, the DNA complex opens up and this enables the Cas9 protein to induce a double-stranded break into the DNA sequence. There are then two broad consequences for what then happens with this double-stranded break. If nothing else is introduced into the cell, the cell will try and repair itself by putting the ends back together and that can result in insertions or deletions, more commonly referred to as indels. The alternative approach refers to precise genome editing techniques, whereby you introduce, along with the CRISPR complex, a so-called repair template that can be used to edit the DNA sequence as the double-stranded break gets repaired. Now, there are two main kind of problems with this system. The first one is that the process involves the introduction of a double-stranded break, and many studies now have shown that double-stranded breaks are very dangerous for a cell. It basically puts the cell in danger mode and causes it to stop the fighting, upregulate my favourite protein, P53, and try and deal with this damage. And that can have undesirable consequences. And so this leads me on to the second problem, which is the fact that these mechanisms of gene editing or gene disruption depends upon the cell's internal mechanism to be able to repair this double-stranded break. So we're depending on the cells here. So it's to some extent unpredictable what could happen because as much as we like to understand these cells and say that we understand them, they do have a mind of their own. <laughs> well, not really, but you know what I mean. And so advances have already been made to try and avoid some of these problems, namely advances such as base editing and prime editing to perform precise genome editing without having double-stranded breaks. But in terms of inducing indels, so trying to disrupt expression of a gene, the only current alternatives involve not inducing double-stranded breaks, but to instead fuse the Cas9 protein to other proteins that can influence the surrounding landscape of the gene to manipulate gene expression. Now, that might sound a bit confusing, but it's probably the most important thing to understand before I go any further. You see, sometimes we don't want to actually change the DNA sequence, we just want to alter the expression levels of a gene. And expressing a gene is a very complicated process and is tightly controlled within a cell. And so cells have epigenetic marks that are used to help regulate the expression of different genes. And this is because different epigenetic marks can be read by the cell to indicate gene expression or not. And also, epigenetic marks can influence the packaging of the DNA and influence how accessible the region is to different so-called transcription factors that actually carry out the gene expression. And so to summarise that more succinctly, to avoid the use of double-stranded breaks, Instead of altering the DNA sequence, it was hypothesized that altering epigenetic marks or what proteins are brought into proximity of the gene 
is an alternative strategy to influence gene expression without changing the underlying DNA sequence. And so as I kind of just alluded to, there are two main ways in which you can alter gene expression by having Cas9 fused to different proteins. The first one is to fuse Cas9 to different enzymatic proteins that can actually mediate the different epigenetic marks. So you could fuse it to a protein that can remove methylation from DNA or the histone proteins that DNA is wrapped around to form chromatin in the nucleus. Or you can fuse the Cas9 protein to different domains that interact with some of the transcriptional machinery, such as the RNA polymerase protein that actually carries out transcription, which is the first step of gene expression. And so I actually made two separate videos that go into a bit more detail if you wanted it regarding these two different strategies, because this paper, this CRISPR off technique, kind of takes two of them together to make one super effective gene inhibiting machine. And this is because whilst these epigenetic editing CRISPR complexes can solve the problem of not inducing double-stranded breaks, as well as circumventing the uncertainty with how that double-stranded break is repaired by the cell. It faces another problem, which is that the DNA sequence isn't altered, and so if that cell divides, is the epigenetic manipulation also going to be inherited? Or is it just going to be a transient change in gene expression? And the second issue is understanding how many different genes can be targeted by using such an approach, as the more sites that can be targeted, the more effective the tool. So let's now take a look at their CRISPR off approach. And so remember, as kind of suggested by the name, the idea here is to be able to silence gene expression. So if we look at their first two versions of CRISPR off, we can see here the dead Cas9 protein. And so dead Cas9 refers to the Cas9 protein that's been mutated so that it can no longer induce any double-stranded breaks into the DNA sequence, but it retains that programmable DNA binding activity. So you can still recruit it to sites of interest. And so that's pretty important for these techniques to work. But you can see in addition to having this dead Cas9 protein, there's something called CRAB at one side, and there's something called DNMT3A the other side, and also 3L. And so the CRAB domain has previously been used alone, as you can see above here, to be able to silence gene expression. And this approach has been referred to as CRISPR-I for CRISPR interference. Whilst the DNMT3A and 3L refer to DNA methyltransferase proteins that can add methylation marks to DNA, and so these domains are altering the epigenetic marks, whilst the CRAB domain is influencing what proteins are recruited into the proximity of the gene. And so in a way, it's combining previous approaches together. But is it actually more effective? Well, as you can see in this figure here, they compared their CRISPR off version one to these two alternative approaches used alone. And what's plotted is the percentage of cells that have lost expression of GFP, which was their testing gene, post-introduction of these CRISPR complexes. And what you can see is that CRISPR-OF achieved a much more effective silencing of this GFP gene than the two alternative approaches. And so it actually turned out that version 2 was more effective than version 1, as you can see in the second figure. But what's more interesting to note about this figure is that here you can see that they only transiently expressed the CRISPR-OF system. Yet 50 days post-transfection of this complex, and so the dashed line actually indicates when the CRISPR system will no longer be expressed in the cell. You can still see durable memory of this gene silencing in over 90% of the cells. And actually, they observed that this memory can be remembered after 15 months, this time by targeting a different gene, CLTA. And so you can see here that 38 out of 39 different clones maintained the silencing. Importantly, they also showed in this study that CRISPR-OF is very specific. So basically it means that it's targeting the gene that they want to target and not implicating the expression of other genes. And so you can do that by performing RNA sequencing to see how the expression levels of the different genes vary on introduction of CRISPR-OF. And so you can see in these different graphs here that the only gene that seems to be significantly different in terms of expression level is the gene that they were targeting by CRISPR-OF. So in these cases, ITGB1, CD81, and CD151. 
But how general is this approach? Can it be applied to any gene of interest? Well, they also tested this, and they did this by performing a CRISPR-off screen, whereby they targeted the CRISPR-off complex in different cells to more than 20,000 different genes. And so obviously some genes within a cell are essential for that cell to grow, and so by reducing that expression, they are not going to be able to grow properly. And so you can use growth phenotype to assess the efficacy in terms of the silencing of gene expression. And so as expected, cells that didn't grow as well had the CRISPR off targeting genes involved in processes such as cell proliferation. And so this helped to validate that CRISPR off was working at many different gene sites. But obviously, if you were going to target a specific gene, it'd be worthwhile optimizing CRISPR off to work for that gene. Anyway, so far CRISPR off is shown to be heritable and pass on to different cells, and it doesn't alter the genome sequence or introduce double strand breaks which are all desirable for this CRISPR editing tool. But another reason why epigenetic editing is so desirable is because these marks can be removed. And so in this paper, they also looked to see whether or not the gene silencing that they had introduced into the cells could be reversed. So to do that, they designed a different tool. This time they called it CRISPR on, obviously because now we want to switch back on the gene expression. And so to do that, we can use the same toolkit that we've discussed before using epigenetic modifiers and different protein domains that interact with the transcriptional machinery to this time activate gene expression instead of silencing it. So their CRISPR on tool involves a DNA demethylase, so removing those methylation groups that were added by CRISPR off. And also to make this tool more effective, they use protein domains that are known to interact with transcriptional cofactors to promote gene expression. Another thing to think about with these tools is what cell types can it be used for, because different cell types are easier to target than others. Notably, neurons are quite hard to target. And so what was quite cool about this study is that they applied CRISPR off to stem cells that they then differentiated into neurons. But before the differentiation, they also introduced CRISPR off to target the gene that encodes the tau protein that is implicated in many different neurological diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease. And what they found was that even though this CRISPR off was only transiently introduced to target the tau gene, at later stages of the differentiation protocol, they found that the tau protein levels were still reduced in around 30% of the cells. And so this is kind of interesting data and very exciting because it gives hope that there's the ability to rewrite gene expression in cells derived from induced pluripotent stem cells to modulate gene expression in cell types that are typically quite challenging to target in terms of delivery of the CRISPR complexes. And so to summarise, this paper introduces CRISPR off and CRISPR on, two technologies for programmably writing and erasing epigenetic memories to control gene expression programmes. And in particular, the study mainly focuses on CRISPR off, which they demonstrate that with only transient expression, it was able to write a robust, specific, and multiplexable gene silencing program that is memorized by the cells through multiple cell divisions and differentiation. And importantly, it could be rapidly reversed by using CRISPR on. So, in addition to the fact that CRISPR off was able to silence the majority of human genes, these new technologies are very promising and very exciting in terms of what we can further do with them in terms of further understanding our awesome cells, but also in terms of potential therapeutic applications. So I'm pretty excited to see what further work is done using these tools in the future. So with that, I hope you were able to follow whatever I said in this video and that you were able to learn something from it. And with that, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters and to thank you for listening.